comic book get made? How does it go from the original idea to the time you pick it up at the store? I'm Phil here in Toronto, and I was wondering that myself. How does a comic go from this to this? Making a comic book is a long, time-intensive process, but it all comes down to one original idea. Somebody's got to think it up in the first place. So, Rob, man, how do you come up with ideas? I just think you, you go with what hits you, what it hits you. I mean, I'll be sitting there in church or having lunch or whatever, and just an idea will hit me. Or I'll, I'll be on the freeway in back of a car, and I'll go, Cougar. You know, the name of the car, Cougar. Oh, Cougar. Well, well, let me see, Cougar. I could do something with that name. And then you just build on that and you run into your drawer, you know, into your desk and you sketch it and hopefully it, it works. Plot or characters, which comes first? The story needs to draw you in to make you care about the character, so one without the other just doesn't exist. Tell us about the last story I gave you came up with. What happened? Yesterday I was, I was, uh, <clears throat> went to church and I, we were sitting there and, and there was, he said something, he mentioned the word axe, which is a, uh, uh, a name of a, you know, uh, a, a book in the Bible, and I took Acts and I said, Advanced Counter Terrorist Strike Force. And I said, That's good, that's cool, I can do something with that. And I went home and wrote some notes, and I was like, Where did that come from? That was so out there. So when you're fleshing out the, the plot, now are you, are you sketching as you go along? But I'll draw key shots. I mean, I lay it all out right then, but I'll draw key, you know, shots in the story. So, Matt, what's your role in the comic process? From the initial plot creation, you, you go through and you kind of monitor everything, make sure the continuity is correct. Um, you go through the scripting process, you deal with the penciler and make sure the deadlines are met. Um, you deal with the anchors, the colorists, the color separators, uh, all the way to the film production. You deal with the, the printing house, organizing, you know, page count, what page goes where, what ad goes where. You do the letters pages, um, you design the, the credits page, the inside front cover, the inside back cover, and deal with a uh, little bit of everything. Now, is this the right order? Plot, script, art. There's two styles. There's the what's called the full script style, and then there's the Marvel style. Which I'm not sure. I believe it was started at Marvel Comics. The full script, like Alan Moore, the war style script he gave us, has a description of all the all the panel work, what is in what panel, and it also has the word balloons of what they're going to say. Uh, a plot is more, you know, just like a paragraph description of the page, and then the artist goes in and on a on a. On a Marvel style plot, the artist has much more creative input. He can go in and, and do a lot more and add a lot more, and then the, the writer will go back in and, uh, and script it after that. What do you think is the most important role in the comic process? The most important step is the first one, the plot. I, I mean, if you start with a bad plot, uh, you have nowhere to go. All right, the starting of a comic book from conception. We're going to start with an idea here at Extreme Studios with my man Rob Liefeld. I'm a superhero. Okay. And I'm like, cool superhero. Good guy. You got superpowers? Oh, yeah, look. Okay, besides being buff, what can you do? Oh, uh, you know, super smart. Okay, smart. Lot, lots of money. Cash. Lots of money. Um, I can drive stick. Stick man! <laughs> Fast. Like this. Like that. Cheese there. Gl uh, Glory. Evangeline. Uh, Gen 13 girls. It's all the girls. And then there's me, right? They're fighting over me. And I'm like, hey, girls, you know? Phil's angry. Right, right, you know, we, we have superhero business to do. A lot of business. Stop with this 90210 stuff. No, no, and let's, no. let's, you know, do some good work here. Ooh, stick man. Okay, guys, here's Phil's story. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, cool. It's not as easy as coming up with an idea and going with it. First, you have to put the right idea down on paper. And if you don't have the right writer, your comic's not going to go anywhere. That's why I planned out Stickman's entire life right here. Well, it's just a first draft. Hi there. I'm not especially world famous comic book artist Ty Templeton, and I'm sitting here in my studio eagerly awaiting the new comic book idea from Phil that's coming my way any moment now. Well, this just in. Phil, as a superhero called Stickman, who drives a stick and everyone adores him. OK, well, technically, that is an idea. Phil's going to be driving a stick. We need to show him getting into a car so that we know he's good at it. There's Phil walking up to the car. 
And here's his millions of adoring fans. They're all standing around adoring. Uh, for the second panel, it'll be Phil, very, very bold and brave, because he's a superhero, big close-up of his face, getting into the car, looking tough. And then a big close-up, of course, of his superpower as he shifts gears. And then, you know, the car screeching off into the sunset. Well, millions of adoring fans continue to adore because, well, that seems to be their job in this story. Well, uh, there's a page of Stickman finished. Uh, it's, uh, it's not really the best idea I've ever had, but, uh, well, you see what you can do with it. That's what I would have done. Let's move on to Batman, a comic book that people actually are likely to read. The first thing a penciler does when he gets a comic book to draw is he starts visualizing his ideas for the page. So for this particular page, I've been told that Batman and Robin have to be jumping down on some guys on a waterfront dock and causing them all ends of trouble. And as you can see, we're more or less done the layout idea. From this point, we take it to a Xerox machine and we blow it up really huge, and that looks like this. This is it, the very same layout page I did just a moment ago, blown up, I think about 300%. I take it, I put it on the, the light table, put the paper over top of it, and quite literally trace it. Comic books are reduced down from the original art to the printed size. The qualities of a good penciler are uh, to be able to tell the story well, so that while you're reading it, you're not uh, questioning what's going on. At this point, we'd send this artwork off to that editor I mentioned earlier on, and he would give it to a letterer, and he would letter right over top of my artwork, spoiling my beautiful drawings with his silly letters. So let's hand it to the letterer now. Oh, I've been expecting this. Hi. My name is Guy Templeton, uh, Guy to the French. I I'm, a pro I'm a professional comic book letterer, and I suppose I've been asked to letter this page of Batman comics. Man, Ty didn't do a really good job on this one. He sort of threw it off quickly. Anyway, the way a comic book letterer works is he gets a piece of script and a piece of artwork at the same time, and the script basically says what to letter in the artwork, and that's what you do. So the first line of dialogue is, let's go. And you just, it's as simple as this. You just carefully letter it in. The qualities of a good letterer really are just to make sure that he can write legibly, primarily. His job is to put the letters on the artwork and make it look as much like they've been put there by a machine as his hands can make it. There you go. A finished word balloon in a professional comic book. All right, well, that's my job done. Now time to hand it off to the inker so he can do his job. Thank you. I've been waiting for this. My name's Cy Templeton, and I'm a professional cartoonist, and I'm also a client. <sighs> I'm going to be inking this page, and when you ink comic books, basically what you're doing is you're taking the pencil blind and you're making it really, really black with whatever you have around to make it really black. Some people like to use crow quill pens, which is this. Some people use magic markers. Me, personally, I like to use brushes and India ink because I think I have more control over my line when I do that. The inker sometimes can can help direct the eye by uh, making an area very black next to an area that's very white. Anyway, there you go, Mr. Colorist, sir. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Sly Templeton, the last of the Templeton boys, uh, and I'm going to be coloring this comic book. I'm telling you right now, though, that the method I'm about to show you is an old-fashioned method that's on its way out. Comic books are still colored like this in some places, but for the most part, they're heading towards computers because computers are our friends. And you literally just take these watercolors and you color in the comic book page exactly as you'd like to see it in a printed version. Here it is, all written, penciled, inked, colored, lettered, and everything else. Uh, ignore the fact that it says different people did it on this particular credit box. I did it all. We've finally worked out our web address. Check us out at www.antigrav.com. The guys at Extreme loved it. They were going crazy over Stickman. I should have some kind of creative meeting or something. Which leads me to this next question. How many people does it take to make a comic? Five. Thirty. You have two or three people, you can make a really good comic book. Five. Thirty, what are you, stupid? You're crazy, five. <laughs> if you have one person, you can make an excellent comic book. Please. Five. Probably like 40. Five, get out of here. And if you have five or more, you can make a mediocre comic book. Five? Five. Well, one, 
to hold the pencil and more to move the table. 20? Two. About 100. Five. Yeah, the good guy and a bad guy. Hi, I'm Jim Shooter, Editor-in-Chief and CEO of Broadway Comics, as you might expect, here in New York City. Well, a bunch of comic book creative people were hired by Broadway Video, which is a big media and entertainment company, to do a development on an unrelated project. And uh, they liked our work so much that they said, hey, let's start a comic book company. The production process here at Broadway Comics is a little bit different than, than, than most other places. Uh, we start with uh, a, a group of writers, and that alone is unique. We, we actually write as a team. Each writer form, performs a slightly different function in the team. I'm kind of the head writer, I suppose. Uh, first of all, we, we, we start with what's called a full script. Uh, this is one of our scripts. You, you can see that it's, it's quite a document. And uh, uh, it, it, what we do is we describe every panel, and we provide the dialogue so that the, uh, the artist knows exactly what he's supposed to draw, and he has uh, a good description of it there, and he knows what the people are saying. Um, uh, we, in addition to this, we provide the artist uh, a, a layout, a rough layout of, of uh, what we uh, think the panel should look like. Now you can see it's kind of rough, it's just a guide. And, uh, and here actually, right here is a page drawn from the script and from this layout. You can see uh, that the, the artist, uh, Jeff Jones, has taken some liberties. He's pulled in a little closer here. Pretty much did this shot as, as it was indicated. Marvel, uh, or most other companies, uh, they, they, they do what's called the Marvel style. And, and, and they give an artist a very brief description of what the story's about. And then and he just sort of makes it up. He draws the pictures for the story, having no idea what the dialogue is going to be. And, and that's, that's great if you have Jack Kirby. And he's very inventive. You know? Uh, on the other hand, it, it sometimes the artist might miss the point, or he might not give the writer enough space to tell the story, or he might misconstrue something. So this way, we keep it much more focused on, on our story goals. The next step in the birth of a comic is computer color, a process that involves, you guessed it, computers and color. Hi, my name is Janet Jackson. I'm an editor here at Broadway Comics, and I'm in charge of supervising the coloring process. Back when I started at Marvel around 1983, all the separations were done basically by little old ladies sitting at light tables cutting out sheets of plastic. But now, since the advent of computers, we have this wealth of technique available to us. Basically, any technique that's available to a painter is available to us with the computer. Once the penciling and inking is done, the black and white drawing is passed on to the colorist. The colorist takes it, scans it into the computer, and with a little bit of direction from the editor, starts making the decisions of what to color. Once you have your basic tones down, pretty flat, you'll start doing the shading. You know, putting in gradations, modeling the figure, putting in techniques. Once you had something like this all painted, you might put a blur on it to show the movement. Everybody works a little differently, but I tend to color section by section. Once I have the tank and the foreground finished, I might lay in a sky texture, then put a gradient of white on the horizon to give a little atmospheric haze. And I might use the airbrush to create some more clouds or enlarge the clouds that are already there. Basically, all the techniques I learned as an illustrator, I use in the computer, just a different technology. we could have seen the magic of Phil Stickman brought to life by the colorist at Broadway Comics. Drop 
Here's something a little bit new on the anti-gravity room. A little thing we call draw. I was always into comic books, and I uh, I knew that, that I eventually wanted to become a cartoonist. And I'd actually I actually met a few cartoonists while I was in high school, and they kind of you know when you when you hold a comic book page for the first time, you go, wow, this is what they this is what they make this stuff on. The process when I was introduced to it, I knew, okay, I can do this. I can turn these into this. And then you know you set out and you buy the paper. I went and I went down. I got the right paper. I cut it to size. And then you just go, wow, I'm like a professional. And so it just kind of it just kind of shot off from there. And shortly after high school, I got a chance to meet with a few editors, and that's when I I actually got my break. When I was a kid, my favorite artists. Uh, Frank Miller, John Byrne, George Perez, Art Adams, all those guys. I was trying to get my hands on any comics I could. And, uh, and I, I just think you're, you're influenced by everybody. Everybody brings something unique to the, to the process, and, and, and I just try and take that and then kind of make it my own without, you know, imitating or being derivative. Me and my friends, you know, Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, these guys, we're all selling these enormous amount of copies for Marvel. I mean, and at the time, literally, we weren't the, I mean, it would be different if everyone was selling that number of copies, but just a few guys were responsible for selling a lot of copies. I'd worked on this stuff for so long, and I just wanted to do my own characters, and, 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 and if I wanted to change him red one day or give him blue hair, I didn't have to get anybody's approval. I could just do it. You know, people said, oh, you guys went off to be rich or whatever, and it's like, no, everyone told us we, were, we would fail. Now, I'm young. If I fail, if Image failed, I'd be 25 years old, and I can go get another job again. So it was like, it was no... The, the bottom line is, could I pay the rent? Mm -hmm. My expectations were really low. So the success that, 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 that suddenly surrounded our company was something that none of us, none of us expected. And you're, you're just sitting there going, whoa. Mm -hmm. It took us by surprise and kind of knocked us off our keister. And it took us a while to get back up and go, Whew, now we got to, you know, maintain this, which is, I think, even more difficult. No food, no water. What comics would you like on a desert island? THB by Paul Pope, Rubber Blanket by David Mazzucchelli, Dark Knight by Frank Miller, Pogo by Walt Kelly, and Crazy Cat by George Harriman. When we come back, Bill takes us into the printing process. Paul, oh, let me talk about trucks. That's into your hot little hands. I think trucks are involved somehow. Hi, my name is Pierre Rioux. Some people call me Dr. Doc. We'll find out why later. But now, let's find out about how a comic is being produced. This disc contains the comic images that uh, we will use to download to the computer. So from the computer and through the magic of technology, we will be able to make printing plates. So here's a color proof of a few pages of comics showing the way we print it. First of all, we see the uh, yellow color. Then we're adding the second color of ink, magenta. We're adding the cyan as the third color. And finally, the black. Film is placed onto a printing plate, pre-sensitized to a light source. Light will pass through the film and transfer the image through the printing plate. Paper used for comics could be of either glossy paper or newspaper. Each of these containers carries over a thousand pounds of ink. In my back here, you will see a roll of paper. So this roll of paper weighs about 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds of paper that will be transformed by the press onto uh, comics, folded sections of a comic book. Now, the speed of the press is running presently about 60,000 impressions per hour. 60,000 comic books per hour that are printed with, with four color of ink. We are using black as the first ink. The second color of ink will be cyan or blue. The third color will be magenta. And the, finally, the yellow. will dry the ink on the sheet. After printing, the pages get assembled in order, the cover is added, and the whole thing is stapled and printed. From there, we stack and package the comics for delivery. I'm called Dr. Dot, 
because that's what makes a comic book dots. By the way, Phil, there are trucks involved. I can't believe how much email we're getting. Thanks, guys. Keep it coming. And we have another postcard from Steve Brandon. Check it out. Japanese anime. Beautiful. Hey, if any of you guys know about Gotcha Man, write in and tell me about that. And for the person out there who asked us, what is Little Dot? Well, Little Dot made her first appearance in Sad Sack Comics in the summer of 1949. And coming soon, Little Dot ORG. Next time we look deep into space, are we alone? The aliens are coming! You can call or you can email us at antigravity at ytv.ca or write to us at the Antigravity Room, care of YTV Canada, 64 Jefferson Avenue, Unit 18, Toronto, Canada, M6K, 3H3. Don't forget to check us out on the World Wide Web at http colon slash slash www.antigrav.com So now you know how a comic book gets made. Stay tuned next time for the final frontier, space and beyond. I wonder if Gen 13 is available on Jupiter. Maybe Io. See you next time on AGR. Relive a science fiction classic, followed by an all-new sequel. It came from outer space, and it came from outer space, too. A Sci-Fi Channel double feature begins tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, Sci-Fi Sunday. Two teams, two countries, two virtual world sports, and one incredible interactive competition. Battle two-legged tanks and race through Mars mining canals when the Sci-Fi Channel presents the Virtual World Cup. Sci-Fi Channel, next. Thank you.